Time for a short review. This video is sponsored by Fudo, so stick around till the end of the video to learn how your tech project can be funded. I recently caught an early screening of Darren Aronofsky's latest film, The Whale, at the Austin Film Festival, and I figured that I would give my thoughts on the film in a video since I know that many of you are excited for the film or at least curious about it. Not much information about the film has been released, at least at the time of this recording. Just a still or two and a poster made from one of those stills. There hasn't been a proper trailer or really anything, and the film is supposed to come out in something like a month, which is definitely strange. However, it has worked in that it's created intrigue around the film, and I also think that people are excited for the movie just to see Brendan Fraser back on the big screen. I will say this, first and foremost, Brendan is back, and this might be one of his best performances. However, the movie itself, it left a lot to be desired. The movie opens with Charlie, played by Fraser, masturbating to gay porn before suffering a heart attack. Miraculously, a young missionary, Thomas, hears Charlie crying for help and rushes in to assist him. Later that night, Charlie's nurse Liz informs him that if he doesn't go to the hospital, he will die of heart failure by the end of the week. The film then takes place over the course of the week as Charlie has to decide whether or not to get help and live or allow himself to die. In the meantime, he reconnects with his daughter Ellie, who he hasn't seen in a decade and who hates his guts, as well as his estranged wife Mary. This film is set entirely in Charlie's apartment, and mostly in his living room. That's partially because, if you didn't already know, The Whale is an adaptation of a play by Samuel D. Hunter. Hunter wrote the play to express what it was like to grow up as a gay man in a Christian fundamentalist community in Idaho. And I've heard that the stage play version is quite good, and that it's actually pretty close to what we get in the movie. But what makes a play good is not what makes a film good. I know that Aronofsky took measures to make this film feel more cinematic, such as putting the couch in the middle of the living room to allow for more blocking, but the film just can't escape its theatrical roots. It still feels like a play, with the main set feeling like a stage, and the fact that the whole film is driven by dialogue way more than is driven by action. You might like these kinds of films, but they're not really my cup of tea. I will say that for how restrictive the film is, the cinematographer was able to capture some beautiful shots. The lighting was always top-notch, and the 4x3 aspect ratio suited the setting and characters well, and allowed him to capture some interesting compositions in such a small space. The setting was also filled to the brim with environmental storytelling, from family photos to favorite books and pieces of junk and a fridge full of junk food. I guess when you've only got one location to work with, you have to make the most of it. But the focus of the film is not the cinematography or the production design or even the story. The actors' performances are the focus of the movie. So, are they good? Eh, they vary. I found Sadie Sink's performance as Charlie's vitriolic daughter to be pretty one-note. I thought Samantha Morton's turn as Mary, Charlie's ex-wife, was quite nuanced and emotional, even though she's in the movie only briefly. The performances of Hong Chow and Ty Simpkins are uneven. Sometimes they're believable, and sometimes it felt like I was watching actors on a stage. I don't know if the fault rests on the actors, the writer, or on the director, because I know that most, if not all, of these actors are talented people, but in a film like this, it's difficult to give a non-theatrical performance. And the only person in this movie who mostly pulls this off is Brendan Fraser. Confined to the couch and under heavy prosthetics and makeup, Fraser can't rely on blocking or movement or anything else to help him. Instead, he acts mostly with his eyes. We see a whole range of emotions through them. Despair, optimism, hope, regret, pity, and love. It also helps that the other characters do more talking than he does, which allows him to give a quieter and more powerful performance than just about anybody else in the film. If I'm not being clear enough, this is Brendan Fraser's film. When people see this movie, I doubt they'll talk about anything other than him, because he gives the best performance by a mile, and because he's really fat. Like 600 or more pounds fat. The people behind the prosthetics and makeup made him look like he was actually morbidly obese and not like he was just a chubby actor wearing a fat suit. He's pale, has sores all over his body, he's got folds of fat that unevenly distribute his weight, and Fraser feels the weight of his character. Every movement is a struggle. Picking up a key from the ground? That's an impossible task. He can't walk without his walker without falling, crushed under his own weight. It's sad and pitiful. I saw some criticism of the film that the movie indulges in a kind of fat exploitation. 
I kind of agree that it does. There are moments where it really wants to wow us with his body mass, and there are other scenes in which we see him just scarfing down fast food and close-ups. But I don't know whether some of these shots or scenes are meant to gross us out, or rather have us feel his despair with him. He's a complicated man who can't get over past trauma and hates himself so much that he lets himself go. He doesn't care that his terrible diet and eating habits are killing him. That's kind of the point. It's made obvious in a scene in which he goes on an eating spree after something bad happens. If we feel disgust watching him put sandwich meat and mayo on a slice of pizza, it's also because he feels disgust towards himself. I found my initial feeling of being grossed out actually transforming into sympathy for his character. But I'm not sure how effective the film was at triggering strong emotions in me. It's a tearjerker of a film, for sure. Plenty of people in the cinema around me were wiping the tears away from their eyes and sniffling, but I just couldn't. Maybe I'm weird, but during the big emotional scenes in the film, I could tell that the movie really, really wanted me to just bawl my eyes out. Close-ups, overacting, swelling music, it was all there. I almost got swept up in it, but then thought, wow, this is trying to manipulate me so hard. Am I so programmable that I can fall for this? Every film manipulates the audience to feel emotion, but the climactic scenes of the whale felt way too melodramatic to me, adding to the unevenness of the film. And that's how I would describe the whale, uneven. There are some good parts and there are some not so good parts. The pacing can be a bit wonky at times, the acting ranges from subtle to over the top, and I don't know if the film wants to be a quiet character study or a melodrama. Not to mention that the message of the film, which I won't spoil, feels a bit half-baked. It's still a decent film though, and if none of my criticisms have deterred you from watching it, I think you should. I hope that this movie puts Brendan Fraser back in work, and I think that anyone who sees The Whale will stop seeing Fraser as the goofy 90s comic actor, and instead see him as a serious actor who can tackle difficult roles. Matthew McConaughey had his renaissance, Nick Cage is having his, I think it's time for Brendan Fraser to have his fraser sense fraser sense brendan sense <sighs> That all sounds stupid. I just hope that we see more of him in the future, and I hope that we can all see him live up to his full potential. I'm glad he's back. Sponsor time. The company I work for, Fudo, is now accepting applications to be part of our 2023 fellowship program. We're looking for people with cool, world-changing tech projects. If you're accepted, you'll stand to make at least $20,000 per engineer. You'll get office space in our new campus, accommodation, connections, and much, much more. We only ask that your project is open source, not based on a business model in which you sell customers' data to corporations or to governments, and that you have a plan to not sell out. If this sounds interesting to you, I'll leave a link to the application page in the description below. I've been the Kino Corner, and I will see you all in the next video.